there! You are about to witness another brew day video. It's been four weeks since my last brew day, and this beer is ripe and ready for drinking. Now, I'm busy in the shed. I'm also preparing my stuff for another brew day, which I'm doing tomorrow. Um, so, let me give you a little bit of background about what um, you're about to see. So, uh, recently I did a video on uh, Pulp, which is a beautiful, um, verdant uh, beer, which, and the recipe appears in this book, The Camera's Essential Guide to Homebrewing. Um, very good book. Book. It's got some really good, um, uh, you know, quality breweries recipes in here for some of their beers. Uh, you can buy the recipe kits from Malt Miller. Um, I didn't bother buying the recipe kits. I just bought the grains myself, put them together, made slight variations. Anyway, so the one that I've tried it, decided to brew this time is a an amazing beer by a company called Left Handed Giant. I believe it's the Left Handed Giant. I think that's right. Just have to find it in here. Um, uh, no, so it's uh, you'll be surprised. It's a hazy IPA. Yeah, that's the kind of beers I keep on wanting to brew these days. So it's a beer called Cheeseburger Cavalry. I don't know if you can see the picture there. That's what's on the label. Um, I've had it once before. It's a really really nice beer. I actually tried to buy some of these beers um, for to do a taste test uh, as part of this video. Um, I thought I'd try and taste the, uh, my beer against the uh, against the actual. Uh, Cheeseburger Cavalry by Left Handed Giant. Nowhere, I could not find it anywhere. No online stores, no nothing. Everywhere it was sold out. Um, so unfortunately, I can't do a side by side comparison, but we can see what it tastes like. So I'm going to run through the uh, through the recipe on here. So what we've got um, their recipe. Now it's a uh, uh, an ABV of 6.9, uh, 53 bitterness units. Uh, now the grain, the grain bill is Maris Otter. There's two types of Maris Otter in here, extra pale and normal. 3.7 um, kilos of Maris Otter and 1.9 of the extra pale. 200 grams of carapils, 125 grams of uh, torrified oats. Mash for 60 minutes uh, into the boil kettle. Uh, and straight away at 60 minutes, you've got 15 grams of Warrior. At 10 minutes uh, left in the boil, you've got 30 grams of Citra. Uh, Irish moss or uh, I use protoflock, uh, yeast nutrient which I didn't use um, and then five minutes from the end 40 grams of citra and then you've got uh, 60 grams of citra and 45 grams of mosaic at the whirlpool so a few little few you know hops in there that are going to add some bitterness to the uh, the overall taste of the beer um, some beautiful aroma beers going in at the end and then the dry hop schedule it's two dry hops on this one um, there's uh, <coughs> 65 grams of citra and mosaic each going in at seven days and then at three days there is 65 grams of citra and mosaic both going in um, so shitload of mosaic, shitload of citra really really interesting US05 is the yeast that's going to be used as part of this uh, beer US05 I, I love that yeast it's a, it's a, you just can't go wrong with it every, every beer I've ever brewed with it's come out really good um, so yeah so that's the recipe I changed the recipe very slightly. Um, just get the recipe here. So I went for just six kilos of uh, Maris Otter, Carapils, Oats, Wheat Malt. Um, so I changed it very, very slightly. Uh, made some good water additions in order to try and get a light, soft mouth feel. Uh, but you'll see all of this stuff in the video. Um, so yeah, because I changed it slightly, it's not going to come out like the actual cheeseburger cavalry, but it's going to come out as a bloody good beer. Now I'm going to. I, I, we're gonna, I'm going to let you watch the, the uh, brew day video. I've had a really, really busy day. As you can see, I'm wearing like my like, crap clothes. I've been busy clearing crap in the garden and taking it down to the tip. I am knackered, so I'm really, really looking forward to this beer. So um, when you see me in a second, I will have a beer in my hand that I just cannot wait to drink. Anyway, enjoy the video. See you in a sec. <laughs>
Um, is coming up to 68-69 degrees so since my Herms coil is what's running through that that's a good temperature to start um, setting up my recirculation you can see it's been half an hour whilst the strike water's coming up temperature is still the same ha, hasn't dropped in the mash tub which is perfect um, so I'm just going to do a recirculation try and get uh, you know get the vault off cleared and the, the vault cleared before I um, start running off in half an hour's time. So let me just set this up.
So I recirculate and I've just turned my so the flow coming out of the mash tun down to minimal at the moment. I don't want to go sucking the grain bed into the um, false bottom. As you can see I've got a nice steady flow coming out of the um, uh, out of the spray ball. Main reason that I did the um, like the first I know, minute of recirculating with uh, without the spray ball and just straight into the top of the mash um, was mainly because there's you know, any loose bits of grain that are going to come out, any 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 of the crap that ends up coming out at the beginning of the of the um, run ends up getting stuck in the spray ball, ends up sticking the, the holes, and then it becomes a problem to start um, spraying for the spray ball. As you can see, it's nice and nice clear run. Um, running through nicely, not a too vigorous a pace, which is what I want it to be like. Um, so this is perfect. I'm now going to leave this for uh, half an hour. I'm just one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the temperature probe out of the um, uh, strike the HOT, and I'm going to put that into the mash tun and try and keep it at a steady temperature of about 67, 66 degrees probably. So <clears throat> here's the grain bill for cheeseburger cavalry. Um, I've deviated slightly from the original recipe. Um, the original recipe calls for 1.7 gram kilos of extra pale Maris Otter. I couldn't find it, so I just went for the whole grain bill, or the main part of the grain bill, to be um, uh, Maris Otter. So I went for 6 kilos of Maris Otter. I've gone for 500 grams of dextrin malt, 500 grams of um, malted oats. Well, I've put malted oats on here, it's actually torrified oats. Um, and 500 grams of wheat malt, which wasn't on the recipe, but I've added them in because I wanted to. Uh, got my um, war editions there, uh, and then we're going to go through to the hop editions. As you can see, Columbus going in 15 grams at 60 minutes. Um, we've got Citra, 30 grams going in at 10 minutes, and 20 grams of Citra going in at 5 minutes. Um, and then we've got some steeping hop editions as well. Uh, so there you go, pretty simple recipe really, using um, USF 5 for the yeast, let me chuck some protoflock in which I haven't done in a beer for quite a while, um, anyway, so recirculation is running at 65 degrees, going nicely, we've got 10 minutes left, uh, and then I'll start running off, look at that beautiful colour of that liquid. Absolutely amazing, amazing looking work. Uh, okay, so it's starting to run off anyway. Um, yeah, probably take 20 minutes for those, although it's running off quite fast. Um, anyway, see how long it goes. But yeah, beautiful colour, absolutely beautiful colour. Still, running off still, it's looking good. Got my sparge on, nice. <clears throat> um, here we are, I've got half the wort poured into the boil kettle now. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but there's little, those little dots are very small particles of what I would have thought are bits of, they're bits of grain, I don't know whether they're oats or whether they're like bits of the wheat malt or what. Um, yeah, the fine particles are just getting through the, um, the bottom of the mash tun. Um, you know, the false bottom of the mash tun's like a metal grill. Um, I'm not massively worried about it. Obviously, it's not nice to see, you know, grain floating around in your wort. But, um, you know, I'm not massively worried about it because it's not a huge amount. But, you know, see how it goes. Maybe I need to start thinking about getting some other sort of filter for the bottom. Don't know. Anyway, we have half a kettle of... Uh, wart starting to heat up here. We have uh, another what 10 litres there. Yep, 10 litres poured in here so far. So a little bit left to come off the um, uh, the mash tun. Uh, but we're almost there, we're almost there. Focus, come on. Almost there to start, you know, start just worrying about the boil, weighing out the hops and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Pretty full. Oh yeah. I'm just getting ready to weigh up all the hops that I've got here. I need to weigh up 15 grams of Columbus. 
opening the bag. Um, I ordered from Get A Brood this time, which I've never really ordered from before. But look, there's some, some little badges. How nice is that? Oh. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot here. 200 grams of mosaic, 300 grams of citra, all ready for the dry hopping and stuff. I've got a 50 gram bag of Columbus, nice that I can buy it in smaller bags than hundreds and end up with loads left over. Again, I only need 15 grams, so I'm going to end up with 35 grams left over, but I'm sure I'll get used one day. Um, so yeah, it's going to weigh these up. Did my first hop edition's 15 grams. Second one, which is, um, what was it? It was Citra, 30 grams of Citra going in uh, at five, 10 minutes, and then we've got 20 grams of Citra going in at 5 minutes. So. Um, so yeah, let me just weigh all this up. Look at the mess around here, I'm bloody so untidy today. Anyway, here we go, Hop Editions 1, 2 and 3. Uh, 15 grams of Columbus, 30 grams of Citra, th 20 grams of Citra. Um, I should really weigh out the uh, Whirlpool hops as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that now as well. Uh, 45 grams of Mosaic, 40 grams of Citra, ready for the dry hop. And I've got hailstones jumping into the uh, into the shed. I don't know if you can see that, but it's hailstones. It's nothing major. Quite light, quite dry. Yeah, half built deck in, as you can see there. I'll finish it off next week then. Brewing's more important this weekend. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, get back on with the brew. Hop editions all weighed out and ready to go. Wondering, by the way, why I've got this tiny little bit of space in order to weigh my hops out when normally I've got loads of room in here. I've got this massive thing um, that I've dumped on the um, on my uh, on my side. I've got a load of tomatoes that are germinating in there. I don't know why I've got them in this big box. It was originally chilies, um, which I've since moved up into our loft room. I've bought like a um, a tree. What they call it? A grow tent. That's it. I bought a grow tent and I've dumped them up there. Um, these are um, tomatoes which I've currently got germinating. Which I'm using a different light for them. This is an orange light. So you can see there's little tomato seedlings in there. Um, but yeah, getting into doing a bit of growing this year as well as brewing. Um, but yeah, that's why I've got very little space on the side. Once the tomatoes are at a good height, I'll either move them upstairs to the to the uh, grow tent or stick them in the greenhouse, I'm not sure yet, but I'll have this space back. This is a temporary thing because it's frustrating the hell out of me. Um, I've got very limited space in here lately, um, which is why I've got loads of crap lying around in the way. Anyway, back to the brewing. I've got a very, very full brew kettle here. Um, I've over overestimated how much sparge water I wanted to chuck in. I chucked in a little bit extra at the end, but I've ended up with that much wort left over. It's not much, it's like, is it on the side here, where's the measurement? It's like, you know, four litres. But it's four litres, is four litres, you know. Um, so I'm probably going to chuck that away, it's probably going to go down the drain, which is a real waste. Um, I should probably try and judge these things a little bit better, uh, try and make sure that uh, my, my quantities are more correct, because I've over, over hit the numbers on, on, the, on the amount of liquid I've got. Let's just hope that the gravity of this thing is correct, because that's the one risk I've got of having too much liquid. We will see. Let's do a, actually, let's do a pre-boil um, refractometer reading and see where we are. So here we are. You can see that. It looks like we're at 1.055. The estimated pre-boil should be 1.060, so we're five points off. So let's see how the rest of this brew pans out. See if I make my numbers in the end or how far off I am in the end, but so far I am down. Close to a hot break, I would have thought. Yeah, getting nice proteins gathering on the head there. Um, one thing has just dawned upon me. Now I'm a type of person that when I am doing a beer, I normally chuck the hops into a hop bag. I've run out of hop bags. So either I just chuck them all into the brew, which most people seem to do and don't seem to have a problem. Maybe I can do that. Um, or, or I can reuse, this is the nylon bag I used to use when I used to have a, um, I used to have my big plastic mash tun. Um, could reuse this, which could be fine. Um, 
Part of me just says, sod it, just chuck all the hops in. I might just do that and then order some muslin bags for um, the uh, for the dry hops, which is where I feel that they're more of a problem. So I can just pull those out and there's not loads of hot matter stuck at the bottom of the um, of the bottom of the uh, fermenter. And if I'm saving yeast, I don't have you know hops ch stuck in there as well. Um, so I think I'm just going to chuck it all in. Sod, sod this bag, too much hassle. Chuck this in, nice and easy. Just got loads of gunk at the end. Not a problem. Okay, going to do that. Nice boil going on here, hot break's just kicking off, as you can see. Took bloody ages to heat up, so I'm going to get ready with my first hop additions, I guess. Yeah, so, let's go and find them. Right, so, these are all empty bags now, by the way, I've just been putting them into vacuum packs uh, over there. Anyway, so, first hop additions. Here we go. It's looking pretty vigorous. It's quite full. Here we go. Whoa! Massive boil over. Whoops a daisy. Whoops a daisy. Anyway, big mess to clean up. Ho ho ho! Wow, that's a proper boil over. Flame's still going though. Mental. I should have been ready with the spray bottle. Ho 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 ho! Anyway, I'm gonna clean this mess up. <laughs> yep, as you can see, all nice and clean. Side of the um, bowl kettle is nice and cleanish. It's, uh, you know, I didn't do too much of it. You know, I'm going to have to clean it afterwards anyway. Uh, floors pretty much cleaned up. Um, phew, only worry about that. Okay, it makes a mess. No problem. I can clean up a mess. No, not worried about that. The only thing I noticed about that was that um, the hops were in the in the foam at the top of the boil. So that's the bit that kind of all fell over the side. There was loads of hop matter everywhere. So. My biggest worry with that, that was I've lost a lot of the bittering hops. So, just to be on the safe side, I've chucked in another handful of Columbus. Uh, not as much, you know, about 7-8 grams, 10 grams, something like that. Um, you know, just to make up for the fact that, you know, I lost it with that. Jesus, that first boil over. Um, anyway, first time this ever happened to me in my life. I'm sure it won't be the last. Anyway, uh, another, what are we on? Another 35 minutes and I'll be ready with the 15 minute edition which will be the protoflock. Back again, uh, just been indoors and had a really nice omelette. Um, now it's time for the 15 minute hop editions, uh, so just one protoflock tablet. Whee! Cool, All right, in five minutes I'm going to chuck in the 10 minute hop editions. Phew, uh, nearly forgot this. I was busy cleaning out the fermentation bucket, I nearly forgot. Um, so, I've chucked in the water chiller. It's been there for five minutes now, so it's going to sit there for another ten minutes. Time for the ten minute hop edition. So we have here, oh, I can't remember, something like 45 grams of citra, something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, in it goes. Cool. Thankfully, no boil over this time. Whew. Not that it would do at this stage, anyway. Alright, see you in five minutes for the five minute editions that it's time for the five minute hop editions so five minute hop editions 20 grams of citra look at that green boiling mess yeah cool anyway five more minutes okay, time's up we've just gone five minutes over an hour uh, so time for flame out cool out um, here we're going to turn the chiller on and go and get this cooling so let's go and chuck this put this on and then we should have some hot water coming out of here put that down this sink and the drain hot water There we go. Cool. Alright. Need that to run down there. Cool. Let this cool. Down to 80 degrees. Oh, so we have just hit the 80 degrees Celsius mark. So I have here my last hop edition. This is the Whirlpool. 45 grams of citra, 45 grams of mosaic. Um, I pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm just gonna chuck those in. I'm gonna give it a stir and I'm gonna let that sit for 10 minutes before I start cooling again. 
I was going to shut the lid on rather than let it sit like that. The gravity reading just before I start um, checking this in the fermenter. So we've come in at about 1.064. So the estimated gravity was supposed to be 1.069. So again, same as at the beginning, we are five points under. No biggie, you know, slightly less alcohol, but it's still going to be an over six percent anyway, which is a nice, you know, a nice um, level that doesn't get you too pissed. I mean, my la latest one is nine percent that's in my um, kegerator at the moment, and it's just a little bit too strong. After two, you are pretty much shit faced. Anyway, I think this is pretty good. One point zero six four. It's telling me to tone it down a little bit, that's what it is. Cool. Anyway, wait for this to cool down to get into the fermenter now. Okay, we're down to 26 degrees Celsius, which is perfect in my eyes. So let's turn this on and fill up the fermenter. Just gonna shut this uh, shed door so we don't get any crap. Blowing in in the wind. Okay, so there she is. A beautiful looking hazy as fucking really hazy um, uh, IPA. So, thankfully with this one, I think the colour is absolutely perfect. Let's try and do a, so there's a very dim torch there. Right, um, nothing coming through at all. It's so dense, this beer. Look at it, there's no, I don't know if there's any light coming through, I can't see any, anything coming through at all, nothing. And this is a you know, relatively bright torch. Um, so yeah, where do we start? Now, the last beer that I did a taste test for, which was my last video, was the Galaxion, um, the Galaxy IPA that I did. Now I think with that one, um, there was something that I did in the transfer from the uh, fermenter to the keg where um, the colour wasn't as light as I wanted it to be and I think it even showed in the video. It was nice and orange but there was a very slight bit of oxidation in the beer um, and that became more evident as the, as the keg, um, uh, you know, as we drank more and more of the keg. It became very evident when I sent a couple of beer mails out. Uh, sent one out to Timmy Jenkins and I had a couple that I kept in the fridge and um, the transfer from the keg into a bottle which obviously had not got flushed, had oxygen in it and you know, in contact with more oxygen it went grey, it was so so um, oxidised, it was unbelievable. The flavour was still there, it was still okay, I had one um, a few weeks ago, about a week or so ago actually flavour was still there but it was grey as anything, um, it was really really oxidised, so I was very disappointed with that so I tried to make sure that I made a really big effort in trying not to get any oxygen into the beer when I transferred it from the fermenter into the keg. Um, you know, it's quite it's a heavily hopped beer, and I think I've succeeded. I think the colour is nice, pale. Um, it's a lovely um, orangey colour. You know, I guess the light. It's just lovely. I don't know if you can see the light up there, but um, it's a beautiful, you know, nice bright orange colour. There's no grains to it at all. I'm really pleased with the uh, overall colour. Um, I can't compare it with the uh, cheeseburger cavalry that you can buy um, in the can. I've looked at the pictures, it looks pretty similar. I don't think the colour is that dissimilar. Now obviously we've used citra and mosaic in this beer, so the you know the aromas I would expect are you know passion fruit, uh, mango, you know citrusy kind of um, uh, uh, fruity flavours, fruity aromas even. And I can smell it from here, I don't need to really stick my nose up close, I can smell this. 
pungent, ripe fruit um, from from over here. So let's stick my nose in and see what I get. It's just there. It's oh, I love it. It's an overused phrase that tropical fruits, but it's that's what it smells of. It's like it reminds me of fruit salads. It's lovely. Absolutely amazing. If you can hear like a whirring noise in the background, that's a I've got a yeast starter in the fermentation fridge just behind the camera. So if it's annoying you, I apologise. Try and get this done as quickly as possible. Um, anyway, look, I've had a really tough day, so I'm going to dive in and just enjoy this. So let's see what it tastes like. <sighs> Lovely. Now, this one came out, pretty sure that the recipe in the book is 6.9%, I suppose, I think I said it earlier. This one came out at 7.3%. I'm pretty sure, I can't remember now, I'll have to look back on the video, but I'm pretty sure that I just missed my numbers on this one. It was just a bit short on the numbers. But it fermented down to a lot lower than, um, than it was meant to. It was meant to ferment down to 1.16. 1.016 it fermented down to 1.0110 so you know it's it's um it's 110 1.010 um and uh, so it's fermented down lower so i ended up getting a little bit of the um, abv back on that it's a bit stronger than the 6.9 percent you know marginally stronger um but it's a it's a nice bit it's uh so let me just tell you, let me just take what the, the kind of flavors i get you know there's there's some citrusy kind of orange peel kind of tastes in there. It's like there's a bitterness in there that I think the hops that went into the boil have give it, give it, and that's probably where I get the kind of the, the kind of zesty orange peel kind of bitterness that you would normally get. Um, it's a real nice fruity kind of chewy fruitiness to it. There's no off flavours in this at all. It's a lovely, gentle, lovely soft mouth feel. Just so fruity with that bitterness in it. It just makes you realise that you are drinking an IPA. It's not it's not too too you know too fruity. Um, it's got that bitterness that lets you know you're drinking a beer. You know, not fruit juice. Bloody lovely beer. I'm going to sit down and relax and just take my feet off of the ground and just enjoy this beer now. I'm going to sit down. I would recommend giving it a go. Um, the next one I'm going to do is my next beer that I'm going to do is another beer from this book, uh, which I'm going to be recording tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to sit down and drink this and then start preparing for the brew day tomorrow. But tomorrow I'm going to be doing a beer by a, a brewery called Odyssey which is a beer called Drop That Ghetto Blaster. Um, and then I may end up doing another beer at some point in the near future. There's a Yeasty Boys one in here as well, I think. Royal Tannenbaum, which is a Earl Grey tea, so I might even give that a go. Earl Grey tea, Earl Grey RPA. I might give that a go one day in the future. So yeah, Drop That Ghetto Blaster, being recorded tomorrow. Um, but yeah, Cheeseburger Cavalry, I would, excuse me, I would highly recommend giving it a go. Really nice beer. I've now got 40 pints of this to uh, chug through, so I might do a couple of beer mails. Um, hopefully this time I don't bloody oxidise the things. Anyway, happy homebrew guys, and I will see you very soon. Take care.